Okay, but like the high level idea is this is that because like we just talked about because Liam said that <coughs> like he have concern about like basically using like Bitcoin for like the plot work in like sampling randomness in like in stack. Uh, but I think before that, I need to firstly tell you why in the start protocol there's a place where you need randomness and why Bitcoin might be able to help with that. So, well, usually all these problems usually come into this is that I need to firstly give you some background about how start work. So, uh, we will focus on the very specific part is that why there are randomness, why you need to like do queries. So in stack, in the entire protocol, you play with a bunch of the polynomial. And a key step of that is that you eventually need to prove that like that is a polynomial that looks like this, and it have a low degree. And why why is this important? Because that if you can prove that this polynomial here, actually let me just write it again. If you can prove that this polynomial is of a low degree, and by the way, here the, the, this is a function x, so this is still a polynomial of x. Uh, x and y is actually some like basically number you know already. If this is a low degree polynomial, usually it means that like basically that f x i equal to y i. Why? Because uh, that's the only situation. So basically that if this is a good that is big now and f is a low degree polynomial, then the only situation that this will also be a low degree polynomial is that like when F when y is exactly the evaluation of f price in f. So basically is that like in all basically that you prove that this is low degree, what you really are actually doing is that you are proving that the this one is true. So this is actually a core part of the like stack. If you don't do that, you actually have no way to really track that this is true. Basically that everything that is in the stack that is tracking whether the evaluation of polynomial is something boil down into doing this, is that checking that this polynomial is low degree. And in start, like, uh, so the point here, x prime, is usually a very random point. Uh, so that, but then what you need to do is that you need to pass that this polynomial is low degree. And the way you do that is that you query this polynomial in a few different locations and track that, like, and there is a protocol called folding, which means that, like, okay, uh, you will try to fold this polynomial in those locations. And you see that after folding so many times, where a lot of the polynomial becomes like almost like a constant number, or a very low degree that you can verify that. Usually, you can fold it to a constant. Basically, that after you fold it into, like, for example, 10 times, it becomes a constant number. Every time you fold it, the degree of the polynomial is half. If you, ha if you do that for 10 times and it becomes a constant, meaning that the degree is not going to be larger than here to do the 10. So that's like, and if the degree is like, when I say low degree polynomial, means that it's probably something 2 to the 30, 2 to the 40, it's not going to be 2 to the 100 or something. So, and so that is basically why you need to do this. And the key part about the security is that you need to be able to sample these points that you are doing to do the testing. And this needs to be secure enough. There are actually a few things why this is tricky. First of all, when you are sampling this point, you cannot sample them everywhere on the chip. You have to sample them over a subset of it. Why? Because you because in like in start you actually commit the value not using elliptic curve, you use a Merkle tree. So all you have is the value that you commit inside the Merkle tree, which is limited. And you query over those points. Basically that you can only select from a specific subset of the point that you want to do this like testing. So you need to sample. Uh, you need to sample some point, and this usually need to be a sufficient number. And the number of the point that you are sampling will actually affect the security of it. Why? Because uh, so let me first kind of show a very simple result. Is that if you are actually creating the original polynomial, actually here let's say f. If f is a polynomial, where you actually are okay, I probably need to explain what this like blow up factor is. But the idea is this, is that every polynomial, you can always represent it in a coefficient representation. What is coefficient representation? Uh, it's like fx equal to something x squared, like something, right, like that. Uh, you can always explain it in the coefficient. But uh, in, when we are doing stuff, we want better security, and usually what we do is that let's not just like provide the coefficient. 
we provide a more redundant format of it. And that would be, actually, let me just draw this. So basically, that like, maybe you have a polynomial that is very simple, and it's probably just like this. This is a very, very simple polynomial. Uh, what you do is that now, you want to create a Merkle tree of this polynomial, and what you do is that you evaluate this polynomial, like uh, basically is that you put like, let's say two to the 10, like let's just say two to the 10. You choose, you, you evaluate this polynomial on two to the 10 different location, and then you commit this evaluation in a Merkle tree, such that you can later find one of them, and then you can test on them. Okay, and like, the 2 to the 10 clearly is much higher than the degree here because this is actually 2. You don't need 2 to the 10 to recover that polynomial. Why? Because in order to recover polynomial, how many elements do you need? Actually, I think if the degree is 2, you need 3, right? If I remember correctly. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 But if you have 2 to the 10, then there will be a lot of redundancy. Okay. Uh, here, then, here is the thing that if you have like, well, because this is degree two, this is two to the 10, usually we say that the blow up factor is two to the nine, because our original degree is already two to the one, okay? And we basically say that the blow up factor is two to the B, here B for this one is nine. But basically it means that the original polynomial is actually very simple, but that you actually evaluate it over a bunch of the points and you commit all of them, and that provides redundancy. That's the blow up factor. And the, then the security will be B times K. B will be the blow up factor. Well, actually, it's the exponent here. And K will be the number of priorities that you do. Usually, you want this value to be something like 90, 100, or ideally 128, which means that you have enough big security of the protocol. Um, OK, uh, let me kind of provide some information here. Usually, you don't want to do too much of a blow up factor. Why? When you use a larger blow up factor, the prover do more work. Like for example, if you have a blow up factor of one, prover do some work. If you have a pro like blow up factor of two to the 10, prover usually do like, I think 500 times more of the work in order to commit the polynomial. So uh, that is a reason that people want to lower this if possible. But when you lower this one, that's a consequence. If you want to maintain the same big security, then you need to commit more points. <coughs> if you want to use a lower blow up factor because you want the prover to have an easier time, you need to commit a lot of points to achieve the same level of the security. <coughs> when you commit too many points, the proof becomes much, much longer. So like there is a balance there. That's when people are deciding what will be the K, what will be the B, they trade off between prover efficiency and also the proof size. Okay, so far so good. Any question here? Okay, so we kind of talked about like why in stock there is a sampling, why there is a big security that will be related to how many redundancy you have in the, in the polynomial that you are dealing with, and also is related to the K, how many queries that you are doing. We want to make it efficient, then the only way you can do is to, well, you can play with these two numbers, that will work, but you also wonder whether you can have something more than this, which is what we are going to talk about, is the grinding part. So this is, uh, so the grinding and the proof of work come from a, a cat pers perspective of the like, stuff, like security, is that rather than thinking about how to make secure, we think about how to make attacking it being different. And the idea is this, is that if I'm an attacker, I want to attack this protocol, the best thing I can do is actually try to sample points that actually doesn't reveal that this is not a low degree polynomial. Basically that, or oh, maybe in the entire Merkle tree there are some point you calculate over that, it'll be fine. Why? Because I didn't commit the Merkle tree as it is, right? I changed the value. So the key here is that like, if I'm an attacker and I want to try to basically sample points that, I, that is in my advantage, then I would need to like, how to say is that, I need to play with this like pseudo randomness a lot. I need to try different randomness in order to sample K points that are all in my benefit. And the problem here is that there is going to be a computation overhead for the attacker. Why? Because the, the attacker, every time you were probably like, oh, let me try another polynomial, let me commit it, let me get the hash value, let me see which k-point I'm going to reveal. Oh, it's different now. You try again. Like, you would, the prover will need to try many, many times, and eventually the prover might end up finding a polynomial that is not of degree, 
but the k point that is sampling doesn't reveal that it's not a low degree polynomial. That is, it somehow work. Okay, the way to prevent this attack or make it harder for the attacker here is that okay, let's just make this process take much more time. Basically, that the, like basically here is a, a that is an assumption or conjecture, basically saying that in real Solomon code there is no trick other than just trying different points, right? And the idea he, here is that like okay, we just make it harder to find this point. Like you because we believe that the all the attacker can do is to try this process many, many times. We just make trying each of that take longer. How do you do that? Is that now you are going to require the attacker to do a proof of work. And this proof of work is actually like it's actually quite simple. So what this proof of work is doing is like this. Uh, so all this like start proof system, there is something called there are many names for that channel digest or field shamir, but let's just call it like the random number, the pseudo random number generator seed in the like field so like field shamir. So basically that the K point are supposed to come from like a random number generator. And you will get K point out of it. Now what you want to do is that okay, let's make it different. I want the prover to find a nuts, a good nuts. This good nouns will have the following properties that now if I have the C, I have these nouns, you will have a bunch of the leading zero. Leading zero bit. This will take time for the prover to try that because the prover needs to try a bunch of different nouns in order to get a good one, right? Mm -hmm. After the prover have these nouns, you compute this, uh, let me see, okay. You compute the C that is like just the C, these nouns, and you adding something more. So the new C actually will not starting with a bunch of the zero. You do do you basically use a different way to hash the data, but now we also these nuts. So when you are now sampling the K query, you are not only using the original C, use the C that have been mixed up with the nuts, and also mixed up in a way that it would not actually have like too many zero at the beginning. Uh, any question here? Can we? Yeah. Can we use something like uh, I don't know the digits of pi, something like a nothing Atmos heaps kind of thing instead of doing this expensive stuff? Is that? Uh, do you see what I mean? Uh, do you, you, you want to prove right? This is like a random. You want to prove. You are not choosing some specific values to game game to try to game the security right? Yeah. Can you just use? Some nothing atmosphere like generator point or pi or whatever. The problem with that is that if I know that you are going to quite oh, repetitionally uh, do the pi when I'm generating the normal check, I'm going to change that sample value. Okay. Yeah. So how I say that there are something specific about this is that why there is a Merkle tree thing is that you are so basically that the randomness will come from the Merkle tree, but run the, the Merkle tree come from this polynomial. When you are trying to gain this like system, you probably will be modifying the Merkle chain. When you are modifying the polynomial, when you modify it, the Merkle chain has changed and that it will change like the point that will be inquiring. So basically that like in order for the security to go through, you are basically creating a game for the attacker that okay, once if you want to leverage this, you need to change some position on the Merkle chain. But once you change that, now I will be inquiring different position. So yeah. I think that the number one point I am not quite understanding is why is some value, some some points, you know, you know, uh, the, the attacker prefers some points than some other points, like whether you evaluate one one thousand or one billion, some somehow some of the value is better for him to gain advantage to to to, to cheat is that. For all this prover, like because the all the results are correct, right? So you can test anywhere it will be a low degree polynomial. Yeah. Here the problem is this is that if a prover actually yeah, so here's the problem. Maybe the prover is actually not committing a low degree polynomial. Okay. But you can still compute the Merkle trait. Why? Because this Merkle trait is not the coefficient of the polynomial, it's the evaluation of the polynomial on a certain point. You can always calculate that. Even if this polynomial actually have a very huge degree, you can still evaluate that, right? Uh, actually, you can simply compute that just like this. Yeah. Is that okay? For each of the points, I can compute this like quotient, although it's actually not a low degree polynomial. You can still compute that on different points. Okay. And you now you have those values. 
If a prover want to like want to really win this game, the best way for it is to cheat. Like basically that like now when you're acquiring some points, um so the, the point that you are acquiring will come from some other local chain so that you will actually calculate the value a long way. But basically that let me try to change the value such that all this value after you fold that many come, they happen to arrive at the same number in some way. So that you assume that oh this seems to be a low degree polynomial. But this is actually not a low degree polynomial. It's a high degree polynomial that happened to evaluate to the same value on that point. It's not a constant polynomial. Yeah. Okay. So let's say I have a, I actually have a degree of two to, the, you know, one hundred. Yeah. But I pretend to be two to the twenty. So I just get all all kind of numbers to make sure it just happened to evaluate to some value equal to that two to the power. But the 20. problem is this: is that like you first of all, you cannot do that for all the points. Yeah, because yeah, if you, you can do that for all the points, right? yeah, that polynomial is always a low degree one, right? Basically, you want to, uh, it's a little bit that you are trying to gain on the specific point that will be required. But the problem is that when you try to gain this system, you somehow also need to handle like different location. Basically, that you can never like, you, if you manage all the point on the polynomial, I think it would be very difficult. Yeah. You might be able to explain that better. I don't know, it's like kind of like a global and a local consistency thing, right? Like the degree given the Reed Solomon encoding is like a global property of all the evaluations. And then there's also these local consistency checks with the quotient. And you want to like detect if the prover is cheating. And so you take your thing and you fold it, you get a new polynomial of half the degree. And so now the idea is that there's like sort of two ways to cheat if your thing is not actually of low degree. Either one of the foldings is wrong, or one of the positions is like broken. And uh, yeah, I don't know if your explanation is pretty good, but uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but like, so, but you can see is that like for the prover, actually the prover's best strategy, we assume is that, okay, you can just try a different polynomial and that, yeah, you require it on different points, but maybe one day the prover will be lucky that all the points that are being inquiry are the points that I have prepared for. Yeah, so basically that this is not a logical polynomial, but when you test that, you would thought that it is. Okay, this will take prover time. And actually we can think about that. If I actually query on only one point, this is probably very easy. Like let's say I'm not doing any blow up factor. Okay, if you don't do any blow up factor, like this one is zero, it's very easy. Well, it's not even like sound then. Like the, the quotient is always of the degree of the, like if you just evaluate it on as many points as it's defined on, then the quotient. I, I agree is that, wait, so if you have a ball factor of zero, yeah. you are committing the original polynomial as it is. Yeah. If you, like if you evaluate it on one additional point, yeah, like that would allow you to detect fraud theoretically. I need to do that, but this calculation is not important. We can do like blow up factor one, but then it will be simple is that if you do blow up factor one, you query only on one point, right? Then like it's, it's easy to prepare for one point. Actually one point doesn't work, right? Um, I guess not. I mean like one point, I don't remember the details of how If you need to commit, you it on one, you, you, you commit the last basically. layer before you actually do the query. So mm -hmm. I, I think it will work. It just not very nicely. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, up until here, I think this part is okay. And the proof of work is just to make trying to break the system a little bit harder. And that like the, I, so here is actually a assumption is that because we don't know what are the relationship between these Maybe that's a two here, maybe that's a two here, we don't know. So what people do today is that like, let's just pretend that the, the constant here is one and one here, so that we will have this like security like formula. This formula basically is saying that now the big security value comes from the following. You have the number of leading zero bit that you require from these nuts. You have that, and you plus that with also the big security from this. There is actually some reason to justify this because that for the prover, you just need to find good query. And now finding good query will take much more time for you to try that. Basically, is that like, okay, for example, now the prover say, I want to find a good query. 
Okay, the approval will be saying, that, okay, before that, let me firstly file a NAS. And probably like, if I really require 78 bit of the NAS for a regular computer, that would be about seven, I think many, many years later. So it's not easy for the approval to do that very efficiently. And here is a concrete parameter. If you can do as many zero bit as what today required for Bitcoin mining, that would be 78. That's a lot of bit. You have 78 here. Now if you want to have 100 bit security, ideally in this case, if you assume everything's right, then you probably only need to do like a blow up factor of two to the five, which is still large, like, but it's okay, it's quite okay now. And you only need to make five query. This parameter, you can play with it because there are also other proof systems where you usually do blow up factor with one only, and then you just do 25 query, yeah. Okay, so this is how ideally everything to work. But that like, the question here is this, is that okay, where do you get 78? You have to rely on something because if you do that on your own laptop, chances are you are never going to generate this proof. Like because 78 big secure is a very, very high number. Like today is mining pool, mining pool like do everything for 10 minutes, they find one, right? And the like idea here is that, okay, can we actually have leverage Bitcoin to do that? The rough idea is as follows, is that like, let's just make it, remember our purpose is to make it difficult for the attacker to try different ones, right? Let's actually assume this is that, let's assume that Bitcoin is ideal. Like there's only one hash going to be pro like produced for like 10 minutes, every 10 minutes. You are almost limiting the prover to be able to try that every 10 minutes. By the way, this needs something to restrict that. Ideally, you want to have the ability that, okay, prover, every 10 minutes, you can try once. And you are going to know what is the query prediction 10 minutes later. That would be, so first of all, like, so let me firstly simplify that. Actually, what we want, regardless of like, what we are doing right now, is that we want to have the ability to make it difficult for malicious prover to try to find different query. The most ideal way we want is that the prover have no other way than like seeing the query community later every time we try. And we want to make it so that the prover cannot do that in parallel. It cannot try 100 like query at the same time and see the result after 100. We want to make sure that every community can do only exactly one of that. Okay, uh, we firstly talk about the naive idea and, like, and then I will talk about why you need some like, modification to make sure that it's secure enough. Okay, the naive idea will be as follows, is that you just need a bunch of the leading zero. First of all, you are not going to ask the mining pool to do like one like leading zero on the specific kind of the hash that you want. They are miner, they want to mine blocks, right? So the idea, the first like, part is this, is that now we are going to change how the proof of work is being defined. Originally, it's being defined as that, okay, you have the C, you have the nouns, you have leading zero. We now change that into the following. You prove that on a specific block header that is like qualifying now, inside that block header, there are many transactions. There is one transaction that is from you, and in that transaction, you say like the C. Basically, you mention the seed in your transaction, and this transaction belongs to a valid block. And that block, in order to generate that word, takes 78 bit of security. This already gives you one thing, that if this proof, malicious prover is not going to leverage the mining pool, then this malicious prover does need to do 78 bit of security, which is not possible. So you can kind of assume that like, okay, but that is the idea, is that you replace the proof of work into a SPV proof, basically saying that in the block, there's a transaction, and that transaction have this seed. Okay, and now I need to mention that there are still a few questions here. First of all, first of all, prover is clearly going to leverage a block, like the Bitcoin to break that, right? If I'm a prover, I know there's a 78 bit of security, I clearly am not going to do that on my own. I was going to leverage the Bitcoin. What are strategy to attack this system if you assume that miner are going to well mine just as it is right now? Okay, there are a few things. First of all, uh, remember that like when I'm doing a SPV, so let me firstly say that like this is so this is basically the naive idea. Commit the seeds, put it on the blockchain, and look for like the block header. This naive idea have a few problems, and the first problem is this: there can be many transactions in one block. A malicious prover 
may try to have one thousand transaction in the same block, and they have different like well, actually they will have different things. But basically, the prover already tried one thousand different polynomial, prepare one thousand different things, and send them into the same transaction. Later, it just figure out whether or not one of them will work. This doesn't ruin all 70 AB of security, but if you have 1,000, we should believe that this ruin at least 10 bit of the security by doing that. How do you try to prevent that? Well, it's a very limiting problem. There are many ways to do that. If you have covenant, you try to make sure that, okay, uh, you have to commit the seed here. Like you spend the previous UTSO, and when you are spending it, you commit the seed. You have basically that you have tried to limit the ways that like you can push the C. Basically, you require that okay, when you push the C, this must be a transaction that span, for example, <coughs> a specific like UTSO, and that is only one UTSO. So you are going to only do that once, at least in one block. Yeah. So that is the first idea: is that you want to do really limiting, so that you cannot like submit multiple C and hope that one of them will work out. This will prevent an attack that have degree like 78 bit security to probably 68 or something. You can do probably more than 1,000 transaction. Uh, each of them will need to be small enough. By the way, this also, oh, there are also some ways to play with that. But basically, this is that first of all, you can have one mechanism to prevent trying multiple like seed at the same block. This is the first way, is that you have a really limiting mechanism. You can have the, the reading mechanism that we just mentioned is relying on a UTSO, right? You need to have a UTSO that is unique so that there is only one way to one transaction that can spend it. That's another way. The other way is to use some financial security. Let's say that every time you click a seed, you should put three Bitcoin there. You need to make sure that this seed is going to work out. Otherwise, that $3 will disappear. That is, a, that is a QA, but that QA is basically saying that every time you try a seed, make sure that you are creating a proof that you can verify later. And to do that, put 3BTC. If this 3BTC is not going to end up a valid proof, and solid, they disappear. Yeah. By disappear, that many ways. Like, if they cannot be spent anywhere, they are basically being burned, right? But you can also say they will be refunded to a specific account. That also works. Okay. But like so, but basically, I'm talking about two. I just mentioned two really meaning mechanisms. One is requiring that you have on the protocol level design, you have a way to limit how many times approval can submit like the hash. And another way is relying on purely financial security. Is that you just make sure that like if you send submit a seed, you need to be able to use it. Otherwise, the like the like basically the deposit that you put that will just be will just disappear. And we believe that three BTC you can gain the security from some other way. And you don't have to like really spend the three BTC here. Okay. That's one. The second thing is this is that in the Bitcoin there's no way technically that are, that are very specific way to do that. But it's strangely believed to be very difficult for a script to know the block header. That is one way to, okay. There are many, there are some ways to do that, they are just very tricky. But basically that like, okay, one way to do that, if you can get the miner to send you some coin that are just being mint, mm -hmm. that would be a way. Mm -hmm. But that like, that is very complicated. Yeah. But like the idea is this, is that like, what if it's on a fork? What if actually like this person just hired some miner to mine six block and they are actually not on the main chain? That is an attack to this like design. Basically, what happens is this is that because the block reward is just per PTC, right? If I need to get six like very nice block, and I have enough time, I can just hire them that like, okay, I'm going to give you 50, 50, 50, right? This is a good number. You have more than 10 minutes to do all of that. You can do that for two days, right? It's a sufficient time for the mining pools. The mining pool will compute six blocks that actually match all the requirements that will pass this test, although it's actually nowhere on the mainnet. This is an attack to this like, system. Basically, that you can still have miner to work for you. By the way, there is a cost for that. After you create this six block, probably they still doesn't work out, so you need to do that again. But in order to make this attack a little bit more difficult, there are also ways to prevent that. First of all, as I mentioned, I mentioned six, right? So this is the first possible like, prevention, is that instead of requiring one block, you require six. It's easy to get people to do one block for you, right? But if I require six blocks after that, 
then you you have to make that block actually a real main that block in order to have five other people to do that for you, right? Otherwise, you have to do it yourself. Where do you require six? Like in generating the randomness, or yeah. So the idea would be this: is that remember here I'm actually doing a test, right? I'm basically checking that you can show me a uh -huh. block header, and that in that block header there is a transaction. Now I'm adding a separate requirement. Did this also show by block after that? Like you want your request to be six deep. Yeah, but I pro so here is also some detail here. I may also require that, like although I require five more block, I actually don't care about that value. Like basically that you only generate the randomness still based on that block. Uh -huh. But you require five block after that. Basically the five other block is not going to affect the randomness. But you just ask them, ask the prover to show them. Uh -huh. So that this is a way to kind of show that like this is very likely on the main net. Right? Okay. There's no guarantee that this is the main net though. So here is one more thing that can be like useful here is that that is also one way to make sure that you are on the main net by just like having a mechanism. So, so I can't just say that like basically that the first way we, put, we make sure that this is very likely the main net is to require more block after that. So that it will be a little bit more difficult for malicious prover to also find five different blocks, right? There are second, there is another like way to kind of make this like a little bit harder. Is that you require this block to be recent. How do you make a block to be recent? You need to know what is recent, right? Uh, so so what what is a way to make sure that like the like this I, I would say a program on the Bitcoin Swift know what is the recent block is that someone need to tell it, right? Mm -hmm. So here is another thing that we might do on this live design is that this contract other than doing the like snap verification, it is also like I would say it's almost like a call or oracle. But basically that people are going to tell this like script what is the latest like high, like state of the like Bitcoin ledger. And how do we do that? It's basically that okay, you you have someone to tell this thing that like what is the latest like block like Bitcoin header. By like showing if like just showing the block header, you can convince that okay the block I will check out, I think I'm on the main chain. And this will move forward. And you are expected that you, you usually will have like this, you have decentralization. You have everyone who can come in and say that like, I think this is outdated, let me push that forward. <laughs> so now that you can always reply that, okay, I want six block and they need to be a recent six block. So if you work on that, like off chain, it's not going to work. Yeah. By six block, now you, it means that, okay, you need to show that this block is on the main chain, so point me where it's at, and then you have like six block after it, and then like actually it's part of the like, current chain, so something like that. This basically is a little bit like running a Bitcoin like, like, like client on Bitcoin. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, and this is just another way to make it harder for the like, prover to gain this system. So this now means, say we, we pick the massive proof and split it up between four blocks usually, this yeah. would mean that it overall is going to take 10 blocks. No, you don't need to take that long. So what happens is this is that like, um, because remember that we are doing verification, right? And so, so the prover will be doing the following. Prover will firstly do the first part of the proof, right? You will do everything until the part that starts to catch like the project, right? Okay. You have all of them, you can start to post like preliminary data on the blockchain. Actually, this data can be just the first part of the proof, or even the input data. I think input data will also work. Okay, actually, you need to see anyway. So you will be running the first part of the proof generation. You put the, you commit the first part of the proof generation on chain, and then after the query is out, you do the second part. So it's not that bad, it's that you basically break the entire verification into two, two parts. Well, these two transactions, yes, there will be a gap between them. Okay. Yeah. Isn't it like priority works like that? There's like the commit phase and the query phase. Yeah. You're just saying do the commit phase and then wait. But would that be a, would that, but you, you, you can see that like in, because it's a multi-run protocol, right? You have to, so many commitments. Oh, oh, sure. Yeah, the, the whole commit phase is like well, all the fiat stuff, right? Uh, basically following that, like, okay, everything before the decisor, the verifier is doing some thing, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, okay, that worked. 
And yes, after the part where you don't need to acquire, you don't need to use the field shamir again. That would be the last time you use it. You can always structure the prover in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, any questions? By the way, like before we try this idea, we also are thinking about a few alternatives, whether or not like you can lower the verified complexity of that. We tried what we were we were previously thinking about one of the technique that probably many people have heard about it called stir. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't work. The reason the reason is as follows. Uh, that is a that is a computation overhead when you are actually transferring the like polynomial in, like to another one. So that's one. So that would be additional computation overhead. But the larger problem is this. Like stir work better when you have a bunch of the query. It doesn't work well when you only have a few points to query. Why are you only have a few points of query? Because you are using a higher blow up factor. When you use a higher blow up factor, you have fewer points, stir become less useful. Oh, okay. Why stir? When is less stir being useful? It's when your blow up factor become not actually possible. Why? For example, if you are proving a very large program, a blow up factor of 10 now means a lot, right? If you have a program that is 2 to the 26, you are not going to use a blow up factor of 10 because that would be made the pro basically the proving overhead will be not really not really possible. In that case, you are forced to use a lower blow up factor just because the prover overhead now become a bottleneck. In that case, you are going to have more query. Now still can help you to do fewer query. But also here is the like challenging part. When you are using STIRT, like STIR, like just basically trying to, so what STIR is helpful is that it allows you to gradually reduce the number of the query that you are going to make, right? Uh, the problem is this is that like, um, how to say that like, so how it will be able to do that is that it is going to do a few rounds of the fry that actually are not, uh, okay. Let's say in fry, each of the round you are going to make the domain smaller, right? it will try to make this slower. Or actually, there is a, so still can do the following. It can actually lower the degree, fold it, but you keep the same number of the evaluation. Mm -hmm. So you are always like that, right? And then you, you, well, you still need to lower the evaluation, but you can keep doing that for a few rounds so that your error cracking code have a higher, okay, have a better and better rate, right? It's being more and more secure. That will have, but then the problem is that, why not just fold it once? I fold it once would have a similar benefit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Fold it once, but without actually make the domain smaller. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we eventually conclude that, like I would say, that in general, it's probably just better to use a higher blow up factor as long as it's practical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because this is only the last layer verifier, you are not supposed to basically that this is supposed to run a small circuit rather than a very large one. Okay, any questions? Does it resolve your concern about like this? Do you feel that it's a more like, like at least less risky because there are actually so many considerations into uh, how, how to avoid being misused? I have to think about it more, but um, I, I think that those are the concrete parameters you're going to use. So like a blow up factor of two to the five and then five queries. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, it's it's like what one. I, I guess the model I had was that the. By by the way, we are actually being very conservative for the Fibonacci like <laughs> somehow we are trying to show. I think we are using like twenty, ten, what what, and eight. Is it, I mean that that's that doesn't just, use the Bitcoin at all. Yeah, so that's that's more just like a normal start. Yeah, right? yeah. The reason is simple. We feel that this would be quicker than doing the entire thing. Although this part, like okay, SPV is already implemented, but you can see that like you need more than that to do all the security prevention that I mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the five million weight quote is for the twenty ten eight or the uh, eighteen five five. Yeah, which which one you mean the like the eight? The oh, okay. <laughs> this one will be the 2010A will be exactly 100 bit. 
Wait, so, but you, you remember the on the, the wildlife, we have uh, the, the verifier script waves, like projected to be 5 billion wave units, right? Is not doing I, so. I, I simply need to update the number, but because right. that number was only end to end, actually we now I think I totally don't know the number. But I think my estimation that the verified call will be smaller than can case still like is true. But I just never actually track the number. But if you are doing this one, it's actually not that bad, right? Why? Because like the prover is actually not taking a very easy time because the blow up factor is larger, right? If you don't look at that. The number of the query only increased a little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, the reason for doing all of this is be because the um, like a normal star verifier is too expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, twenty ten eight. I get. I get. <laughs> two, to, two to the ten blow up factors is like. It's uh, going to be a problem when you are processing circuit larger than two to the twenty. Mm -hmm. But here is the good thing. When the number is not that big, yeah. anyway, like, let, let me change this to A, right? It's easier now. It's actually four times faster for the prover. You only increase the high rate by two. Yeah. I, I mean, like, if you're. By the way, here, if you change that into 10, well, actually, it's still three, but yeah. Do you have a sense of what the size of the bootstrap circuit is? Like how how big of a circuit do you need to be able to verify like a start with reasonable parameters? Let, let me check a message from Victor because Victor sent me uh, like because last stuff is also implementing like a request in like circle start right now, so they don't have a like specific, like a real number, but what they have is that they have estimated from that previous implementation of percent to uh, basically how many columns it would take. And I don't have the final like width unit, but okay, I have some, I think I remember some number. The size of the, basically the number of rows in the like stack probably will be something like two to the 20 or something. Oh really? Okay. Or maybe even smaller, but basically smaller than that. But the number of columns they are thinking is 300, which I feel oh. that that's a little bit too much. That's, uh, that, that may, may be too much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I have the feeling that like it might not be, you, first of all, I was quite curious that why do you need to make it that large? Because I know basically this is that like, I think you also know a little bit about like snap friendly hash function, right? If you don't use lookup, let's forget about the lookup for now. We want to build a simple like proof system. Uh, there are some like, some snap friendly, like you can actually, basically if you use customized scale, which we are clearly going to use, you probably only require like four columns or something. And that like for each of the like, Basically, if you want to run one hash, I think it probably only take like 12 Relative. row. Yeah. That sounds plausible. Yeah. Yeah. The reason is simple is that like, if, uh, let's say if we are doing four, two elements, actually I think the number will be larger, but 300 columns is a little bit too much, I think. You probably don't need that. Yeah, it sounds more like a prover optimized thing. Like they want really fast provers, so they use a lot of columns. Yeah, column also make it easier for you to parallelize that. Uh huh. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, like, it, if if you could make the twenty bits of grinding version work, it just it seems like it would be better to do that because you avoid all of the. And also, if you look at the improvement, like using how to say that you. So I think here is one thing that seventy eight bit security also doesn't really. I think it have with the prover a lot. Why? 2 to the 5, 2 to the 10 is a big thing for the prover, oh, right? Oh, definitely, definitely. That's 30 times like higher like prover cost. But I mean, if you, you know, you'd only verify something at the end once, it's like... I think the minutes. question kind of broke down into, we don't know how big the recursion circuit will be. Right. But if you have five, it will actually give you off the leeway, right? Mm -hmm. Because generally, stop verifier, recursive verifier on stop is usually believed to be smaller than a uh, snap like recursive verifier, right? Uh, yeah. Because the uh, because star usually you are going to have like the same view, while in snap no, usually yeah, you yeah, are yeah. not going to sure, have the sure, same sure. view. Yeah. 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 I guess I mean part of it was just I didn't appreciate how large of a blow up factor you were <laughs> going to use. Seventy eight is a little bit surprising, right? Well, the, that 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 part I knew, but the two to the ten is is a lot, like a blow up for the. Polynomials. 
it made the approval 1,000 1, times lower, right? right? Right. So should I actually start fighting with ZK Fit companies now? <laughs> well, thing about the good thing about that, like Seriously. all the hardware acceleration <laughs> companies are going to be super happy because you've just increased the market size by 1,000, right? <laughs> and here is the key part is that why 1,000 might be practical? Because you, I think eventually will be related to like how much like money we can save on the verified cost. If a verifying the proof huh. can like 10K, right? $1,000 can do a lot of the proof generation. Mm -hmm. Basically, that is more about that without not making approval work harder, will actually be worthwhile on the saving in the like, in the like cost. And if, okay, and the balance can be completely broken if some miner are happy to accept this transaction for free. It's not impossible. Actually, it's possible. There might be a future where there are some mining pool are willing to do this for free, but they are they sign agreement with the application that want to use that. Yeah. Basically, proof application layer, and basically they want relationship deal with this project that won't work. You can rebate the NEV from the L two back to the miner. Oh, but, uh, well, how to say? Is, is that what you're talking about? Like, yeah. that's I'm talking mean. about Zama. Remember, so how many people know Zama? Mm -hmm. FHE company. They take 5% of the fee, 5% of the token. 5% of the token is a lot, because usually the team don't have 5% of the token, right? <laughs> I have an idea now, thanks guys. <laughs> yeah, but that work is that like, okay, you give me 5% of the token, as long as my mining flow is still running, uh, yeah, your proof will be verified for free. And you don't need to go kill people once you're on the token. Yeah.